Duchess of Sussex celebrating her 38th birthday this weekend. Six minutes after those first 911 calls, first responders were on scene securing the area. And then you hear a second boom, and then after that, it's complete rapid fire. Run out that way. This morning, new details from the massacre in El Paso. First 911 calls came in at 10.39 a.m. Saturday. An active shooter on the loose, terrorizing family shopping at back-to-school sales. These chilling images captured the gunman on Walmart surveillance cameras, wearing ear protection and carrying an AK-47-style rifle. Hurry up, hurry up, run. Frantic shoppers rushed out of the Cielo Vista Mall and the Walmart Supercenter next door, where bodies were lying outside. Stores went into lockdown. This J.C. Penney employee began directing people to safety. This guy from this side, you have to run down. The shooter's that way. He's over here in the other. Paralyzed by fear, others hiding under furniture. 10:45 a.m. Six minutes after those first 911 calls, first responders were on scene securing the area. 11.06 a.m., the suspect, 21-year-old Patrick Crucius, was arrested. Police say he surrendered without incident and was the lone gunman. Investigators say hate may have been the motive. In all, at least 20 people were killed, dozens more injured. The victims range in age from 2 to 82 years old. The wounded, bloodied and dazed, were triaged at the scene. Some using shopping carts to transport victims. Survivors shared their terrifying tales. The shots were going, do, 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 do. And then he was like, is that good shots? I said, yes. People were running inside saying there was a shooter. I've never been so scared in my life. In the chaos, Glenn Oakley tried to scoop up several kids that got separated from their parents. I'm in the military, so when I just, I hear gunshots, I just think, take cover, save whoever I can, but I was just so worried about those kids, man. Hundreds answered the city's calls for blood donations. Lines stretched for blocks. Upon hearing the news, Democratic presidential candidate and former El Paso congressman Beto O'Rourke struggled to contain his emotion. I'm incredibly saddened, and it is very hard to think about this. Um. A local school was set up as a reunification site, but hours later, people were still looking for loved ones. All I want to do is find my mom. Somebody needs to tell me where she is. I want to know if she's dead or alive or if she's still in Walmart. Overnight, as the city of El Paso was still reeling, the governor called for unity. Crimes like this are not who or what Texas is and will not be accepted here. This morning, locals grappling with the tragedy. They take our peace from us. The security, we don't have that anymore. As El Paso comes together after being marred by another mass shooting. Anthony, good morning. I know this is a very difficult day for you, and I really appreciate you taking some time to help us explain what exactly happened last night. I understand you left that bar a little after 1 o'clock in the morning. What happened from there? Yeah, yeah at 1.05 a.m. I was leaving out. Um, I know the exact time because I was looking at my phone. I had to be at work at 6 a.m., and me and my cousin, we were leaving out, and, he, and we were talking about staying until 1.30, and it was still a long line to get into the club. It was a lot of people downtown. Um, it's usually a live night on Saturdays. Um, and by the time we got to the end of the line, once we got to the end of the line, which is near the corner, you heard one gunshot. You heard boom. So we looking around. We didn't know what it was. It didn't sound like a familiar sound. And the buildings around here made it kind of echo off. And then you hear a second boom. And then after that, it's complete rapid fire just for like one minute. So, Anthony, you were inside the club. Was there any kind of confrontation? Did you see anything happen before all this took place over the course of the night? Yeah. No, I had been in there since 11. Um, nothing was happening at all. It was a perfectly fine night. Everybody was having a good time. Um, there was really no issues at all. It wasn't any even arguments or anything. It was very unexpected what happened. So you saw the gunman uh, after the shooting began. Can you describe him for us? Um, white male, all black, and he had a face covering that covered like right to here. And you can see this, you can see this part of his face where all this was covered. 
Could you make out what kind of weapon he was carrying, Anthony? Not exactly. I just know it was an uh, it was an assault rifle. You hear the gunshots ring out. Tell me what the scene was yeah. like after that. Um, once the gunshots start like coming rapidly, you just see the crowd running west. We run it down towards uh, to get out of the Oregon. And you can just see as I turn around, my, my friend was behind me, he wasn't with me. So when I turn around, I'm looking for him and I see he was stunned. And that's when I can see the people in the line that was in, in the line at Ned Peppers. You can see the bodies actually start to fall. So mm. then we knew it was like bigger than just even a shootout. And we just continue to run and we just yelling to people and just telling them like, run, it's a mass shooter, run, it's a mass shooter. Next up, Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, celebrating her 38th birthday this weekend. Husband Prince Harry sending her a sweet message via their Instagram, writing, Happy birthday to my amazing wife. Thank you for joining me on this adventure, love, H. It's been quite the week for Markle, having served as guest editor for British Vogue and starting a charitable fashion line. So happy birthday to the Duchess, and I'm sure this next year will bring even bigger mm -hmm. things for her.